In the last video, we set up the VMs for our virtual industrial control system. Let's look at what some of these components in our ICS do. So start all of the VMs that we set up in the previous video, except for this video, you don't have to start the workstation VM if you don't want to. Look at the SCADA BR VM. You will see an address it tells you to navigate to in your browser. So open a browser on your host machine and navigate to that address. Log in with the user ID admin and the password admin. Your browser may warn you to change your password. Um, mine did, I'm using Chrome. Just don't worry about that, it doesn't matter. After logging in, you will see a human machine interface or HMI for short. An HMI is something that allows an operator to monitor and or control an industrial process through a graphical user interface. In this case, we can see valve positions, flow rates, tank pressure, etc. This HMI also serves as a historian. A historian is a device that, at its simplest level, just records values of data points in the process. You can view historical data by clicking on the eye icon in the top left of the SCADA BR homepage. Check the Inception checkbox at the bottom, and then click the little arrow to the right of that, and it will eventually generate a chart of data point values over time. While the HMI provides a way for operators to interface with an ICS process, uh, it does not itself control the process. The actuators and sensors in the process are read and controlled by something called a Programmable Logic Controller, or PLC for short. The PLC in turn communicates information back and forth with the HMI. So we have our browser, which is talking to the SCADA BR VM, and that SCADA BR VM, which is the HMI, is talking to the PLC. And the PLC is what is ultimately talking to the ICS process. In this case, the ICS process is emulated by the chemical plant VM, and that just runs a software simulation of our chemical plant. So that covers all of the VMs we have running right now except for one, which is the PFSense VM. This VM serves as a router and firewall. Here's a network diagram to give you a better idea of how this all fits together. So we have our HMI, which also happens to function as a historian, in a different subnet than the rest of the components of our ICS. And this subnet is separated from the other subnet via our PFSense router firewall. The subnet that contains the HMI is what we call a demilitarized zone, or DMZ. Um, historians are often found in DMZs because they need to collect data from the ICS, or the OT network, but they also need to provide that data to the business network, or the IT network. In the rest of this video, we're going to pretend to be an attacker or a penetration tester. So we're going to create yet another VM, and this VM is going to represent the attacker machine. We're going to place this attacker machine in the DMZ subnet because it's more likely that an attacker would be able to infiltrate a DMZ subnet than that they would be able to infiltrate our lowest level ICS network. Kali Linux is a distribution of Linux that is commonly used by hackers and penetration testers. Go to the Offensive Security website and search for the Kali Linux VirtualBox image, or just go to the link that we provide in the description and download the appropriate VirtualBox image for your machine. In VirtualBox, click File, Import Appliance, and just leave all the default settings um, except you may want to change the file location that you save the VM to. Click on Tools and find the name of the host-only adapter for the 192.168.90 subnet. Click on the Kali VM and then click Settings. Click Network and then go to the Adapter 2 tab. Click to enable it and then select the host-only adapter option and for name, select the name of the adapter that we found in the previous step that was part of the 192.168.90 subnet. Expand the advanced options and make sure promiscuous mode is set to allow VMs. The next step may not be necessary for you, but I'm going to do it to make things easier going forward. So I'm, what we're going to do is give the Kali VM internet access. So go to the adapter one tab and unfortunately this will vary a lot based on your personal setup, 
but in my case, I selected the bridged adapter and then I selected the name of my Wi Fi card. Now you can start the Kali VM. Its username and password by default are both Kali, lowercase k a l i. The first thing we're going to try to do as an attacker is find the IP address of the PLC. Recall that we expect the PLC to be communicating with the HMI, and also that as the attacker, we are in the same subnet as the HMI, the DMZ subnet. We will perform an attack known as ARP spoofing to intercept traffic that's intended for the HMI, and then we will sniff that traffic to try to ascertain from what IP address the PLC is sending values back and forth with the HMI. Most versions of Kali come with the command ARP spoof pre-installed, but it seems as of this recording that the latest version from their VirtualBox download page does not come with it pre-installed. So I guess we'll have a little bonus lesson on installing a Linux package if you don't already know how to do it. Open a terminal in the Kali VM and type sudo apt install dsniff. dsniff is the name of the package that includes the ARP spoof command that we're looking for. At some points during the installation, you may be prompted to type Y or N, just always type Y, and ARP spoof will automatically be installed. The IP address that we're trying to spoof is the IP address of the HMI, which we already know from the SCADA BR address that we put into our browser. So we know that the IP address of the HMI is 192.168.90.5. So in the terminal, in the Kali machine, type sudo arp spoof 192.168.90.5. If you're prompted for a password, type in Kali. We should now be receiving network packets that were intended to be sent to the HMI. To sniff that network traffic, we're going to use a program called Wireshark. So click on the icon in the very top left of the Kali VM, and then click on sniffing and spoofing and then click on Wireshark. This will open Wireshark, and you should see a list of network adapters. Double click on ETH0, and you should now see a running list of all the network traffic on this network interface. The key thing is you should see a lot of traffic that is to and from two different IP addresses. 192.168.90.5, which is the HMI, and then another IP address that is 192.168.95.2, which we will presume is probably the PLC since that is what the HMI primarily is talking to. So we think we found the IP address of the PLC. In the next video, we'll be looking more at the type of traffic that's going to and from the PLC and see if we can manipulate that traffic to make the PLC behave differently.